So to, to keep it short, I mean, you can read this yourself, but like to keep it short, we're the missing link between uh, academia and Wikipedia. And uh, how many people know what the education program is? Okay. Okay, so, so the, the general idea of the education program as it is now is that students write Wikipedia articles instead of writing a traditional term paper. Okay. And, and there, there are several benefits um, about it. If you're an educator, if you're, if you're an instructor, please talk to us after this session. Um, and now um, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, where, we, where we come from. Um, because this, um, this Wiki Education Foundation has kind of some, some history. It started uh, with... Um, well, with me being on a, on a plane, you can see I'm, I'm kind of scared of that plane because um, be, before I, uh, I, I, we, we went on that flight to, I think it was in Georgia, um, we were on a way to the university and I had never been on a small plane like that, and so I, 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 uh, I was rather scared. So now, uh, the, uh, the point here is we started uh, really small, we started with an idea, we started with um, thinking about Wow, uh, having educators work with their students on Wikipedia articles, is that something that people would be interested in? And this flight is part of um, a series of flights where we talk to educators, where we talk to them about, hey, would you be willing to do this with your students? Um, and what's interesting is that um, other than what we thought, um, there were not that many people who said, no, oh, we don't want to have anything to do with Wikipedia. Actually, what happened was people said, come on in. Uh, we never talked to someone from Wikipedia, and this sounds like uh, it's, it's an interesting idea. So tell us more about it. And then the, uh, we brought a couple of people together, and you can see this, this, this logo on, on their shirts. Um, so they're what we call uh, campus ambassadors, people who help the, uh, the instructors uh, in person on campus and who help the students figure out how Wikipedia works. And this is, this is one of the, uh, the initial groups. And um, well, as you can see, uh, what happened uh, after we uh, kind of successfully rolled it out in the United States and in Canada, it spread to other countries. So this is a picture from, uh, from Egypt. And as you can see, one thing uh, that, is, that is rather clear when you look at this picture is, wow, this is not the usual uh, gender distribution that you, uh, that you see on Wikipedia, right? So uh, one of the things that we figured out um, pretty quickly was that uh, using uh, this teaching with Wikipedia would also be an opportunity to change Wikipedia's agenda distribution. So um, this is kind of awesome to, to see that many uh, women on the Arabic Wikipedia editing. Um, next one. So just to, to, to sum it up, um, we, we started a pilot project, it started in 2010. Um, the idea was that we would, uh, or the students would improve a specific topic area, and uh, that was public policy on the English Wikipedia. And it worked quite well. Uh, we, as a result of the pilot, we said, wow, um, this actually is a tool that works, and so let's move on to the next one, and then um, the, the Wikimedia Foundation was um, working with uh, people in Canada as well. And then we rolled it out on the, on the Arabic Wikipedia, as you've seen. And then at some point, the Wikimedia Foundation said, wow, this has a lot of potential. And so maybe it's strong enough to be its own organization. And so in 2013, in July, uh, the Wiki Education Foundation got started. And that's a new nonprofit based in San Francisco, in California. And, um, well, I think almost, no, uh, more than half of the staff is here. 
uh, today. So, um, so we're still rather small, and we're uh, supporting the education program in the United States and in Canada. All right, so since you guys are all here to hear about Wikipedia education, um, sort of operating <coughs> under the assumption that you believe student editors editing Wikipedia is a good thing. So I'm going to talk more about why professors in the US and Canada should do it with the Wiki Education Foundation. For starters, we have a lot of experience. So Frank said the public policy initiative started in fall of 2010. So we've worked with over 450 courses in the US and Canada with different assignment types, trying to achieve different student learning objectives. Um, and we basically have the breadth of experience to help new instructors learn what is the best way to make this fit into my class and to make sure my students are getting out of this what I want them to get out of it. One of the main reason, ways that we accomplish this is by really focusing on assignment design. So this is something that Wikia really believes in, that upfront, Professors need to design assignments that not only work for their students, but that work on Wikipedia. Because we do care a lot about the student learning, but obviously we, all of us at Wikia, care a lot about our impact to Wikipedia. So most of our classes and our students are actually creating really high quality content on Wikipedia. I'm going to show you some examples here. Um, we have some Camps Ambassadors, as Frank mentioned. So one of the things we really do is we target Canvas faculty who can help students learn how to be better writers, how to do research. We work a lot with librarians. I'm sure there are several librarians in the audience here today. We have, oh, I saw some hands raised. Um, so we really focus on that, and it's actually a direction we're moving in even more so, to make sure students get that support in person on their campus so that they know how to access the best references and add really well-cited information to Wikipedia. So here's an example of one of our student articles from spring of 2013. A student started this article on women's health in India. I grabbed a few screenshots to just show you. After she edited, you can see from, hopefully you can see the table of contents here, um, the kind of diverse information that she was adding. And here are the references. So she added 35 references and far more citations than that, hopefully you can see. And actually, this article is seen over a thousand times a month by other readers around the world, which we think is a really awesome way for students' contributions to really impact the world. Another way that we're really trying to accomplish improving Wikipedia is by targeting specific content gaps. So, of course, this is speaking about English Wikipedia, but we know that the STEM disciplines are really well represented, and the humanities have a lot more room for growth. So what, some of the ways we do this are we partner with academic organizations. So an example I'm going to give you guys is with the American Sociological Association. So as you probably know from its name, um, these are professors who teach sociology. And with their initiative, we've brought 35 sociology courses to the program. Those students have added almost 6,000 6, pages of content, and 71% of them are women. So we see this as a really great way that we can target those content gaps and really make sure the work that they're doing is representing the knowledge around the world and not just the people that Wikipedia may currently represent. Here's another quick example of a great article. Um, Women in the Arab Spring was started by a student also in the spring of 2013, which you might notice is more than two years after the Arab Spring began. And here is also a screen this screenshot. I recommend you guys go look at this article. It's really amazing what one undergraduate student was able to do during her assignment. Similarly, this gets over a thousand pages a month. And one of the reasons I think our professors should work with us is they're doing this anyway. They're teaching with Wikipedia. They were doing it before us. Some of them are doing it without us now. But we want to support them. We want to make sure they have our experience and they can really avoid problems we've already seen people make. We, you know, we want to minimize the number of student articles that get taken down. We want to minimize the amount of plagiarism that ends up on Wikipedia. So if we can give them the guidance and experience we have and our resources, then we think this is the best way for professors to work with us. And just a quick example of this, you guys may have seen this go around a couple months ago. Back in May, there was a blog post that got a pretty significant amount of attention on um, Wikimedia listservs and in, the, in other publications. 
there was a professor who decided to let her student edit Wikipedia. Um, and I actually found out about this and reached out to her and asked her if I could help support her. And you know, she said, oh, it's one student. I'm sure it'll be fine. If I ever do this on a large scale, I'll reach out to you. Well, she wrote this blog post about a pretty fairly negative experience that her student ended up having. And after a good back and forth with me and with us, and actually with several of the professors in our program, she updated her blog and said, the number one thing you should do if you're going to ever do this is register with the Wiki Education Foundation. Make sure that you're getting the support that's out there and that entering into Wikipedia isn't necessarily as easy as she expected it to be, but that you could do it in a very positive way. And so, if any of you are out there planning to teach with Wikipedia, definitely come speak with us, as Frank said. You know, we have Wikipedia ambassadors, we have online trainings that really help our students, ambassadors, and instructors. And we have several brochures, which I'm sure you've seen the Wikimedia Foundation staff handing around today, this week as well. Um, and then there's me, and then our classroom program manager in the near future. So I'm going to talk very briefly about the priorities that we are going to have in our first year. Um, as Frank mentioned, we started officially in July 2013, but the staff buildup started this particular year. So this is our sort of year one priorities. Um, our, our primary goal is to help improve Wikipedia's quality. And so we want to do this big classroom program through increased support through a new web infrastructure that we're currently developing where uh, we will have an assignment design wizard where professors can input how many students that they're teaching, what disciplines they're teaching in, how many weeks they want to enter into the assignment, things like that. And then the wizard will walk them through suggestions of here's the best practices for how to design your Wikipedia assignment. Um, Jamie had mentioned the American Sociological Association. We're also looking at doing additional institutionalization is the word that we're using to describe this. This is the idea of making the existing support structures that are there for instructors on teaching and students and learning, so librarians on campus, these associations that the professors belong to, getting them on board and getting them involved in the support. And so it's not us doing recruiting and outreach to instructors, but it's these organizations doing the outreach and the support under the guidance of our materials. And then in the fall, we'll be starting a small pilot specifically targeted at filling content gaps, working with undergraduate honor societies and students in the areas where there are uh, content gaps on the English Wikipedia, targeting those specific disciplines for the small pilot to see where, whether that pilot is successful or not. Our general view is we want to do small pilots around educational issues. If they seem to work out well, then we'll expand them into fully fleshed programs, but we want to start small and say, does this work, does this not work? If it doesn't work, we will admit it doesn't work, and you will hear some of the mistakes if you stay for the third session today in, in this room, which I will talk about the mistakes we've made. Uh, but, but if it does work, then we want to expand it into to a full program. And then finally, uh, we've been focusing a lot on just building a well-functioning organization that has impact. For us, impact is crucially important, and we care most about what the impact we are having on Wikipedia is, and that the students are adding high-quality content to the English Wikipedia. So this is the end of our slides and the point in time where we are open for your questions. Um, who has a question? about the Wiki Education Foundation. Yes? Um, I'd like to know, you, you just talked about impact. Um, what, what's it like, you know, what, what kind of impact are you talking about? Is it like having people uh, becoming uh, Wikipedians for the rest of their life? Or is it just um, like, for example, students filling up gaps in Wikipedia and then maybe after university they're gone again? So, so like, you know, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So, so our view on editor retention is that what's actually more important is to retain the instructors. Um, it takes a lot of effort to onboard one particular instructor into the program to get them up to speed on what the best practices are for teaching with Wikipedia, to give them the best tips on assignment design, for them to figure out how Wikipedia policies work with their particular class and how to do that. But once they have done that and once they've gone through it once or twice, they are pretty self-sufficient and can teach with Wikipedia every single term. And so what happens is they're bringing 20 or 30 new students on Wikipedia every single term, and those students are contributing 20 or 30 articles without very much support from us at all. And so from our perspective, bringing and retaining those instructors is incredibly key. Now, do the students stick around 
The answer is not really. I mean, we have about a 2% retention rate of our student editors, which is not particularly high, but on the other hand, there's not a lot of other programs that have significantly higher retention rates, so it's not like 2% is, is completely terrible. But the focus of our program is on content and is on closing those content gaps on the English Wikipedia. And so we specifically target the disciplines where professors are teaching courses on subject matters that aren't well covered on the English Wikipedia so that we can get content fleshed out. And then by retaining those professors, there are more and more students adding content in those disciplines each term. What other questions do you have? Yes? You always talk about English and Wikipedia. What about the other languages? So, so our organization specifically focuses on the U.S. and Canada. Um, clearly, French is also spoken in part of Canada. We have not worked with a class um, in Quebec, but that we would be open to that. Uh, the Wikimedia Foundation, the floor and Anna, who are right here, and Ty, who's back there, are the points of contact at the Wikimedia Foundation for the global initiatives. Peter. Thank you. Have you, have you had any experience with voluntary contributions in, in in, in a university or high school course, because uh, I'm sure you know that there were a couple of issues when you make something compulsory that that you'll get a lot of plagiarism, copyright violations in from from students who just put it in last minute and who haven't understood it anyway. Uh, so I, I was thinking how because I'm not trying to make it voluntary to say, all right, if you if you don't want to do that assessment. Don't do it, uh, rather than defacing Wikipedia. Yeah, uh, it really depends on the cultural context. Um, I think the US and Canada program does not, I mean, certainly students plagiarize, everyone plagiarizes at the academic level, and it's something that we see in university classes around the world. Um, I would say in my experiences um, as, as a former Community Foundation staff working on the global programs who worked on a number of different programs in countries all over, I would say the U.S. and Canada program has the least challenges with plagiarism. Um, so, so I would say the voluntary aspects do certainly help with that because you're asking you know, students to do it and you know, if they want to do it, they do. Um, I would say we have not seen sort of major concerns. You know, we do say, look, if this is not something that you want to do, or if you put it off too much until the last minute, ask your professor for an extension. Don't, you know, don't just dump something on Wikipedia for the sake of dumping something onto Wikipedia. And generally, our students have been receptive to that. And, and, and I think that's what, when Jamie was talking about the work that she does on assignment design with faculty members, um, that's where that really, um, that really comes into play because she can say, hey, look, you know, this is a really important aspect of this. You've got to allow the time in there for the students to actually work on this. And we do a milestone model, so they have to have certain thresholds along the way. So they have to have created their list of references two weeks before they have the assignment due and things like that, which really helps. Um, the online training we have all the students go through as well highlights plagiarism and explains the difference between close paraphrasing and plagiarism and you know really does a, a good job I think of telling students you know really you'll get caught if you plagiarize and so just don't even do it and it wastes valuable volunteer hours cleaning up after you so so that, I think that really helps and I think um, just to, to add to that a little bit um, so one thing uh, to understand is like what we have right now is the classroom program where uh, students edit Wikipedia uh, in a certain mandatory way um, um, in, within the, the, um, the, the term, right? Um, one of the things that we're going to do, uh, that we're going to start in November is um, to, to start a pilot where we will also experiment with uh, students doing uh, Wikipedia editing work um, in, in their free time as an extracurricular activity. Um, but that would be something that we would report about like uh, later on. We, we haven't done that so far, but this could be, as Leanna said, that this could be a second line of program, uh, classroom program, extracurricular program. Um, but that's something that we're uh, only going to start in, in November. Yeah. Far back. Um, you mentioned Assignment with uh, How does this relate to the existing 
Well, I can't speak to the Education Program Extension's future as a non-Wikimedia Foundation staff, since that's a Wikimedia Foundation tech project. Um, but I can say from my experiences using the, the course extension, the extension, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, is a way to create course pages on Wikipedia. And so the students all enroll in the course. It lists all of their usernames. They can add the article they're specifically working on. And then the extension leaves little breadcrumbs throughout Wikipedia. So if you click on the top page of an article, a student has added in there. There's a little banner at the top that says this article is subject to an educational assignment and then links back to the course page. And at the student's talk page itself, it'll have a, this student was enrolled in this particular course on, at this point in time. Uh, so, so it's a really good way of sort of increasing transparency for the community of editors about the student editing projects that are going on on Wikipedia. And so when somebody stumbles across what looks like a student project, they can easily determine sort of what the project is. Um, the assignment design wizard that we're building is going to be built outside of MediaWiki. Uh, MediaWiki just doesn't have the functionality to do that sort of responsive wizard aspects. Um, so, so it will not be directly related to the courses extension, but we continue using the courses extension for all of, for tracking all of the OnWiki um, activity and courses that our students do. And just, and just to let you know, we're committed to, uh, to the same values that the uh, Wikimedia Foundation has, so every piece of software that, that we're going to build, um, and, and this will be the, the first piece actually, uh, we're going to add more to that, uh, will be under free license. So as long as you have a web server, you can just take the code and, and use it on your website. This is not an exclusive uh, software that we're just building for us. Yeah. Uh, I have a question concerning the quality of articles produced during the education program. So, of course, if not speaking about plagiarism and other problems that will result in probably deletion of the article, what what do you do if the articles submitted are of insufficient quality? So, you probably need either some volunteers to clean up after it, or you need probably a teacher to underrate this article and make some remarks on it. How do you deal with this? Yeah, yeah. So, so um, we have started off by doing a two series of article quality studies. Um, we took the Wikipedia 1.0 assessment ratings, which for those of you who are not familiar with them, those are the, the start class, step class, A, B, C featured article, good article um, criteria that are on the top page of articles that editors have assessed. And we've taken those and made it into a 26 point rubric with sort of emphasis on the content that's been developed as well as the, the formatting illustrations, things like that, and then the sourcing that is used um, in particular in the article. And so we asked volunteers from the English Wikipedia to evaluate the version immediately prior to when a student worked on it and then the version that the student left the article in, so their very last edit at the end of the term. And we did this study twice, once during the pilot phase of the US program and once uh, two years after the pilot phase had ended. And both of those showed that about 80% of the students significantly improved the quality of articles. Um, about 10% made such small edits that it was indistinguishable. So they did things like fixed grammar or stuff like that, which just doesn't change the article enough to make it uh, appear on that 26 point scale. And then about 10% had, um, had made the article worse in some way. Um, that is what, what Jamie was talking about, about the ambassador role, is one of the things that, that we work with ambassadors on is, hey, if students in a class you're supporting are adding poor quality content, um, or with instructors, if the students are adding poor quality content, let's revert that, let's roll that back, let's get that back into a sandbox and have the student work on it more, or just say the student, you know, didn't, uh, you know, didn't do a good enough job in the assignment and we'll move it off Wikipedia. But our goal is quality content on Wikipedia and for us having high quality content is sort of of paramount importance and you know for us the, the fact that 90% of the articles you know get better in a tiny way or significantly is a pretty good statistic. And when we're talking about content, we're not only talking about text. So some of the classes, really yeah. some of the classes are classes that that add uh, images that where the students upload images to Wikipedia Commons. Or so we have uh, uh, several classes where the students were supposed to create videos and upload those to to Wikipedia Commons or graphs or whatever it is. So it's not only always about text. What else? 
one question about where are usually our students editing? Is it sandbox or direct to the wiki page? So, so we encourage the students to start editing in a sandbox. Um, they are able to then, you know, get a feel for wiki code. It's a lot less scary. Um, but we encourage students to move essentially once they have a general outline sort of two or three sentences in each section cited to a reliable source, we encourage them to start working in the article namespace. And the reason we do that sort of at that point is because that's generally where students start, if, you know, if they do have problems, quite honestly, most of the problems are they write it as an analytical essay rather than an encyclopedia article because that's what they're most used to writing. And, um, but most students can figure it out if somebody sees it in advance and tells them, hey, it looks like you're writing an analytical essay here, a Wikipedia article needs to be fact-based. And then they, then they don't even realize that that's what they've been doing, but once it's pointed out, then they're able to, to write the rest of the article in fact-based format and sort of remove the analytical pieces that they've already added. Whereas if the student stays in the sandbox the entire time, then they don't, they miss out on that interaction with the other community of editors and, uh, and anybody being able to sort of head off any potential problems. So, so we certainly do start students in sandboxes, but we try to move them out of sandboxes quickly. And some, and some students start off with going to the top page of the article and saying, uh, in, encouraged by their, their instructor, hey, here's what I'm planning to do, and then they get feedback from the community. I really think that that interaction uh, between the existing community and new editors is really important, whether they're students or not. We have two more minutes, so time for one more question. Yeah. Um, so we work with we work with a lot of librarians on campuses, and we're really going to start doing a push. I, this is actually a new role that I just started a couple days ago. I'll be working more with librarians. Um, usually, they take on some of the traditional roles of the campus ambassador. So we train them to learn about Wikipedia if they don't already, which most of them don't really know the back end and the editing of Wikipedia. Um, so they kind of pick up the Wikipedia expertise. Then they go to the, to the class and work with the students on not only how to edit Wikipedia, but how to find the research that they're trying to add. So, I mean, we see that our classes that have librarians supporting them do very good work and um, really avoid some of those problems with essays and with unsighted information that they're adding. So this is something that we'll continue pursuing. And, and to, to add a, a, just a, a small thing to that, um, we've seen that uh, this is usually popular with uh, librarians. Uh, uh, one person told us, hey, this is the first time that some of the students went to my library. So, uh, <laughs> because, well, they are under, under greater pressure, right? Um, if they make a mistake in their term paper, uh, maybe no one notices. If they make a mistake on Wikipedia, the community will notice. Um, and, and they will hold them up to the, to the standards of Wikipedia, and I think that's a good thing. Thank you very much for the questions. Here's our email addresses. If you have additional questions for us, you should feel free to, to reach out to us. Thank you.
Anybody hear me in the back as well? Yeah. I see nobody saying no. So. Hi. Um, my name is Pearl Cabez. I'm with the Wikimedia um, Foundation. I work on the Wikimedia Education Program. Um, and we are here to talk about the Wikipedia Education Collaborative, as you can see up here. And I would like to start by introducing all of us. I already said who I am, so Tony, would you like to go next? Oh, all right. Um, maybe I should stand up. Hi, my name is Tony Sant. I am the uh, education organizer for uh, Wikimedia UK. And uh, I'm here as part of this uh, education collaborative that we're going to be speaking about. Hello everyone, my name is Shani Evenstein. I'm from Israel, one of the uh, people who um, lead programs in education in Israel. And on the off chance you were here when I was talking five minutes earlier, I am Leanna Davis. I'm the director of programs for the Wiki Education Foundation, which is the US and Canada branch. All right, now you've seen a few of us. I think there's a couple more of us in the room. Would you like to raise your hands if you are with the collaborative? So there's Lee, Thelma Nader in the back. Lee, come closer. <laughs> there is Ty sort of in the middle. There's Anna and Jamie here in front. Right. So if you have questions after this session, you can ask any of us. All right, so what is the collaborative? You may have heard us being called the cooperative. <laughs> this is what we were until recently. Now we're the Wikipedia Education Collaborative. So who are we? We are a group of people who share a vision that Wikipedia belongs to education. I mean, it's already there. We can't really deny that it is. So we might as well use it in a good way. Um, that's what sort of brought us all together. Um, so we're a group of program leaders um, from around the globe who have been using Wikipedia in education in some shape or form in our geography. Um, and we, we all share the same desire to um, help others with what we have learned over the years. So I want to talk a little bit about the history of the uh, collaborative. <laughs> um, I, I started this when I was with the Wikimedia Foundation as a way to sort of start connecting program leaders together. Uh, previously, yeah, the role of the program manager at the Wikimedia Foundation was a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations with program leaders around the world. And while that was great for me and I had a chance to talk with people from all over the world, it was a bit difficult because they weren't talking to each other. And I think that, that net sharing a network of information is really what's most important and it's how the best uh, decisions are made at the local program level. And so I proposed this idea of creating this Wikipedia education collaborative and invited members who I had worked with in, um, in the past as one of the program managers to um, who, who were the, the programs that had shared their learnings with other programs and who were sort of very engaged in that global space. Uh, so we started off with uh, 16 uh, initial members and we had a kickoff meeting in, uh, in Prague in March where we all got together and identified sort of where we wanted to go and how we were going to get there. Uh, next slide. So, so let me talk a little bit about sort of how we define education program because I think that's really important. There's a lot of, of terms that are used around Wikipedia and education and education obviously runs through everything everyone does on Wikipedia. Our goal is to spread knowledge just like and another way to say spreading knowledge is to say educating. And so education is clearly really important to all the work that all of us do on every project in the Wikimedia space. Um, what we define this specifically as is the, the classroom-based activities. So there is an instructor in some sort of school environment who is asking students to contribute content to the Wikimedia projects. And so this is not just edit, ed, teaching students about Wikipedia or how to use Wikipedia as a resource, but it's about having students actually making contributions to the Wikimedia projects. And so that's sort of the definition of the education program we use to form this collaborative. All right, 
So here you see some of the goals. Um, so we've said, you know, we can do it all, we have to focus a little bit. So one of the things that, as Leanna was saying, we've heard a lot of people talk about what works and what doesn't work in their particular region, but there's, it seems to be only limited that there's like a central place where we gather all those learnings um, that, they can, that we can help others with, so that hopefully they won't have to make the same mistakes that we maybe made. Um, so one important thing that we're all working on right now is establishing best practices for education programs, figuring out what works, what doesn't work, and gather that in a place that um, other people can find it as well, so that we don't just have the knowledge, but we actually share the knowledge with all of you, because that's what it's all about, of course. Um, you know, we're also trying to collect new ideas, so yes, the classroom-based um, program is definitely our focus for now, but we know that there's a lot of other cool initiatives around education, and we want to hear about all of them, because we think they are great, and you know, whatever anybody does with repeated in education, that has our sympathy. Um, so we also want to know, if it's not a classroom-based activity, what works in another country, and so we're trying to sort of figure that out too. Um, well, together with the best practices, we're sharing resources. So um, we have brochures, we have online training, we're trying to make it easier for people to start uh, an education program wherever they are. Um, another thing that that's, we've noticed is very important is to have recognition for everybody who's doing all the hard work to make it could get better. So one thing we're working on right now is a, a sort of a global recognition system. And then, of course, there's the communication aspect, which is, you know, we can gather learnings all we want, but as long as we don't manage to communicate effectively about them, um, sort of in vain. So one of the things we're also doing is trying to make sure that whatever we learn will be findable um, by others. So since March, you may ask, what have we been working on? <laughs> um, a lot of things. So one of the things has been structuring the collaborative. It's a new initiative. Nobody really knew exactly what it would look like when we started. Um, so over the past few months, we've been working on shaping the collaborative, making sure that we understand what it is so that we can stand here and explain to you what it is that we're working on and what we're doing. Um, and then we all like to be action focused too. So we've identified a couple of areas where we want to focus most of our efforts in initially. Um, that's not to say exclusively, but initially. Uh, and those are the four that are listed over there. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Then where are we headed? Well, you know, we are a nice group of people. Um, and we would like to have more nice people join us. So we are hoping um, that we can hear from people who are interested in being mentored and we're interested in you know, meeting people who want to help mentor others. Um, so basically, if you support our vision and our goals, if you're really interested in helping other education programs, and if you are committed to investing your time into helping others, then we would love to hear from you. So, a little bit more about the work we've been doing so far. Um, one of the areas I mentioned was mentoring. So we've been, we know that there's about 60 plus uh, educational initiatives worldwide. Um, and we have been trying over the last few months to talk to everybody. And of course we haven't quite succeeded because that is quite hard. Um, but I'm gonna have to hear all at Wikimania and I'm hoping to make some headway on that front. So we're trying to figure out what the world is doing in education um, by talking to everybody. Um, and then another thing that is related to the mentoring um, and the, the outreach is to develop a, a template which can be used for the best practices. So as I said before, we want to find the format which will be most helpful for people so that we can share our learning internationally. Resources. That's <laughs> um, can you open the course? I hope the link works. <coughs> so, um, hi everybody again. Um, hope you're finding this interesting. I know that um, coming from a really small country that did a bunch of educational stuff, uh, I mean, a good place to say that 
uh, one of the things that draw, drew me into these collaborative uh, efforts with other people from around the world was the fact that um, we do things differently in different countries. Um, although at the beginning there was a lot of focus about the US and Canada programs and they led the way in a way, uh, we found that different countries have different ways of collaborating and we kind of wanted one place, I think it's really important that we have one place that sort of collects all the knowledge that we have. Um, and so one of our goals at the beginning, um, between March till now, was to kind of um, start collecting everything that we had online already. And we had various places. It was crazy at the beginning while trying to map all the different resources that we had. We had stuff from English Wiki, and we had some stuff from Outreach, and we had brochures and stuff, and it was scattered all over the place. So um, one of the first things that we did uh, with the help of Anna and Sage, who's not here, right? Um, <coughs> is collecting everything and basically dumping it first in one place. Then uh, we went through the scrutinizing process of trying to somehow organize it in a way that makes sense to different user groups that might find this uh, information interesting. And I mean, there's on one hand Wikipedians or Wikimedians or people who lead programs. Um, if you have program because that's an issue as well. Not every country has a program or an education program. So that was something that we kind of continued to talk about uh, and how we define things. So that's one user group that we aimed to. Another was, of course, educators. Uh, people who are actually teaching classes and are using uh, Wikipedia with their students. So we somehow had to give them a place to find whatever it is that they want. And lastly, what if we have? <clears throat> Generally, that's the, the, the two crucial, um, oh, for newbies, people who are simply interested in, uh, you know, are interested in education, want to somehow collaborate, want to do something cool with it. <coughs> that's, by the way, the way I started. I was sitting in Wikimania 2011 in Haifa listening to um, some, some people talk about educational collaborative and grand collaborative, and uh, that's why I wanted to join. I feel like it's really important. So, how many of you are new? How many of you are, it's the first Wikimania they're attending? Don't be shy. Oh, wow. Great. Ooh. A bunch of you. Um, so, yeah, you're a, a huge group we are aiming at, and hopefully, it will be interesting enough for you to, uh, to take a look at the portal and see what's there already. And <clears throat> as part of doing this, one of the cool things that you'll find there is a map, right? <laughs> There's a map uh, of the whole world where each country that has a, some kind of program or some kind of initiative can go to and update what's happening. And I think one of the most crucial things that Thor was doing right at the beginning was to actually even find out what's going on. Because we didn't have a good enough sense. We knew stuff were happening in education worldwide, but we didn't know what, what exactly, where. We didn't have any idea. So now we have a better idea. And hopefully, um, some countries that don't have anything happening will, that, that will become blue uh, <laughs> in sort of a, <laughs> a Wikimedia. Uh, way of uh, things. So yeah, so the, the, the portal is out there, uh, outreach.education.media.org. Yes, exactly. And um, you're all welcome to use it and to add stuff to it. That's the most important. It's editable. We want you to participate. We want you to update whatever it is that you're doing, share resources. And that was the first thing that we uh, thought had to happen. And if you are doing educational stuff in your country and it does not look blue on this map, <laughs> then you should most definitely come talk to one of us. Yes. We just added a few countries this week. Yes. Yay. Very, very interesting. Maybe it's a good time for things to talk a bit about. Yeah. Well, we can go back to the, the website. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, not about the, uh, the, the resources. Thank <laughs> you.
So I think it's it's useful to see uh, what some of the resources on the, uh, on the website. Um, and uh, I think, uh, for me personally, uh, going to the resources link on uh, education.wikimedia.org, uh, uh, <laughs> coming to this link here with resources, and as, um, as uh, Shani was just explaining, you know, it's, it's, it's grouped into different things. But one of the things I personally find useful is this link to brochures that you, that you find linked under each of these. So uh, finding what brochures are available, and quite a few of these are available even in hard copies uh, downstairs in, in the community village. Uh, some of them you'll recognize, they are uh, related to uh, general training and not uh, specifically necessarily for education settings, because as we know, the Wikimedia resources are all educational anyway. But things like editing Wikipedia or illustrating Wikipedia or even evaluating Wikipedia. But then there are also education specific uh, booklets. And these are the four main um, uh, booklets that you see here on, on the screen. Um, what's interesting it does is that each of these are available in electronic format here. And uh, there's also the uh, source files for them so that they can also be translated or localized uh, to other regions and other languages. And the same thing also go, goes for uh, this bunch of uh, classroom handouts. So these are one-pagers, one, for example, advice for uh, choosing articles or citing uh, resources or, or moving out of the sandbox, as, as was explained earlier uh, by, by uh, the, the, the pre in the previous uh, panel. And again, uh, the, uh, the, the, the source files for these can be downloaded so they can be localized or translated for, for uh, different audiences. Yeah. You want to talk about the communication? <laughs> we're coming to that. Okay. All right, so uh, apparently uh, we're moving on to the next thing that Floor mentioned earlier, which is our communications. And uh, as far as communications, uh, I'm here to speak about the main thing that, um, uh, that we as a collaborative have been facilitating. And this relates to a, uh, a newsletter that uh, is edited once a month by uh, Lee and Anna here, whose hands you saw raised earlier. And uh, they uh, invite, uh, uh, we invite uh, contributions from anyone and everyone around the world, but uh, they're generally the ones uh, editing it every year, uh, uh, every month, excuse me. And uh, so uh, here you will find that um, there's uh, things that link back either to blogs from the specific chapters or, or even personal blogs or, or other websites and these kinds of things. Uh, but it's a good place to get a, a sense of the kind of things that are going on. And there are, there are many, many countries represented here that go even well beyond the 16 represented at the beginning of the establishing uh, this collaborative, clearly. So this is open even beyond the activities of the collaborative, of, of course. Um, and again, this is, this is very easy to get to, and you can also get it in different formats, which is one of the things uh, that is very useful. You can get this as an email, if you like. You can uh, get this as one page. You can get this on the web. Uh, you can have this emailed to you. And so there are all these different options uh, that you can, you can subscribe to, depending on what your uh, personal needs uh, may be. If you have questions about this, we'll be more than happy to entertain them at the end of this panel, and they'll be uh, most probably answered directly by Anna or by Lee, who yes. are, as I say, uh, more involved in, in producing this uh, monthly uh, newsletter. I'll just add that uh, the 15th is the deadline, so if you do uh, have something to report on, please do it before the 15th. Uh, that's every month, yeah? So we would love more, more stuff, more stories. This is for everyone, basically. 
Okay, and I will talk uh, very briefly about our work around global recognition. Um, the, the global recognition action team identified sort of three main areas of people who we wanted to see recognition for increase. Uh, the first is students, the second is educators, and the third is program leaders. Uh, for the students, we decided to adopt something that uh, the, the Nepal group had started, which is the idea of Wikipedia driver's licenses, where they give little cards with students' names on it after they've successfully completed a course, giving them the idea that they have a sort of driver's license to continue on Wikipedia. It's something we've also seen in the Arab world, that certificates are really important for the programs there. And so we want to create a global recognition for students who have contributed high quality content to their language Wikipedia. Uh, the second is our educator um, recognition. And this is an idea that we had had and started in the US program during the, the pilot in 2010. And we started the idea of a Wikipedia teaching fellowship. And in this case, fellowship is not in your traditional academic fellowship where you get money to do something. This is just a recognition uh, since we have no money for this. But the idea is we want to globally recognize the educators who put the time into getting trained to use Wikipedia as a teaching tool in their classes and whose students have contributed good quality content. And with each of, with both the student driver's licenses and the Wikipedia teaching fellows, the idea is the criteria for that particular, for achieving that particular designation will vary by country and by program. And it's up to the individual program to determine what aspects are the requirements for that, for achieving that recognition. Uh, but, but all across the entire world, all of the Wikipedia education programs will have the same designation. Uh, the, the final one is recognition of program leaders. Uh, we weren't quite sure what to do with this, and so we started by doing a survey of program leaders. Many of you may have received this email. Uh, we have gotten the results back, and we're in the process of evaluating them and determining what the next steps will be for that. So stay tuned for that. All right. Now we have spoken. Do you have any questions or anyone? Go ahead. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Derek Chan, previously Council Ambassador for Cambridge. I'm not convinced by the idea of a global recognition framework. I've um, spent the last year as a university English teacher in China, and the discrepancies I see between the requirements for accreditation um, and certificates between different parts of the world are too different for one system to work everywhere. And I think that's something that the comedians have in tradition where of and I just want to reiterate that we will need completely separate systems and formats of recognition for different parts of the world because academic culture is very different even Talk though we work the same yeah. academic okay. Can I take that? Yeah. Um, what's your name? Derek. Uh, Derek. Derek, hi. Um, so you're totally right. And one of the main issues that we, we were, that was one of the main things that guided us from the very beginning was that if we want it's all about community, first of all. It's all about creating some kind of glo global community of people who can exchange um, information, but basically localize it in a way that's suitable to the area and to the place. So we're trying to be as broad and as inclusive as possible and allow various, um, well, you can say program, you can say initiative, you can say call it whatever you want, every place, every country, every project uh, can, can localize it the way that suits them. Uh, but at least you have some kind of um, community. People who are doing the same things, sharing ideas. Uh, we also have a mailing list, which we haven't mentioned yet. Uh, but there's an open education list uh, that you are all welcome to subscribe to. Uh, this is a good place to ask questions and to share ideas and to share experiences. Um, and I personally find it very useful to have people throughout the world doing a bunch of different things. It's also quite inspiring because you get to hear about things that are done differently. Sometimes it will give you ideas. Sometimes it totally uh, won't work for the place that you live in or the community that you have. But at least you're inspired and you're in a group of people who are doing the same thing. So, that's the, the main goal. Okay. Peter. Thank you. Just, just one or two comments. 
at first you said, yeah, you collected all the stuff at, at, at one place to fight the scattering of information. Well, well done, you scattered it for me now. Right? Because uh, before I had one or two pages to update, now it's three. I just realized that, that I'm having a big profile on outreach that, uh, on that country uh, profile, and it's all two years old. It's not proper anymore. I just updated it. But uh, so uh, that, that creates a problem, particularly when you're kind of reaching out in, in many places. I mean, I, I, I'm not busy on Meta and Wikipedia. Media Foundation, Outreach in English and German and Afrikaans, the Incubator, Translate Wiki, and I'm, I'm, I'm losing track. So isn't there, that would be my first, uh, that would be my first comment, uh, isn't there a way to kind of streamline that, to uh, send me an email if you changed something or if, if my picture pops up somewhere with my job it's description? Wiki. It's Wiki, you know, so basically you can take the content that you have uh, in German, is it? No, it's not like okay. take it as an example. Whatever it is, whatever language it is, first of all, we would love to see more languages. That's the whole idea. Um, and I totally get what you're saying. Coming from a non-English speaking uh, country, that's always an issue. But it's it's a case of, I think, visibility and you wanting to share ideas. And, and in the end, you can do it bilingual. Uh, but at least you know there's one place now where everything is happening, and which was the goal. Uh, you can do it locally and you can import the same material exactly to, to that page. So only two places, no more than that. Before it used to be much more... Considering that I'm only an outreach person and not also an editor, not also somebody who provides voices and stuff. That. May I make a suggestion? Okay. I'm Anna Pope, uh, Program Manager for the uh, Education Program at the Foundation. I'm the one responsible for Eastern Europe and Asia. I have a colleague who's responsible, Ty Flanagan, for Africa and the Arab world, for, for the North America and the continent, as well as Western Europe and Latin America. You have three people who could do that for you if you paint us a link to what you want. I, I would also say, Peter, I, I think you are in the minority because, you know, you actually engaged with and were sharing information about what you were doing prior to the collaborative, and I think that's one of the challenges is there were so few people actually doing that that, yeah, there were, I, I think you are one of a handful of people who have this problem, so. And one more very short comment, and then I shut up. Um, regarding Regarding their external suggestion, what I would like to see is some sort of a wizard where I can click together what I want the students or what I want to write on that certificate for the student. Where I say, is it attendance? Is it passing? Is it contributing? Uh, where I just give me a few words to enter, which place, which date, name of person. And then I click submit, and then I get a PDF that I can print out. That would be helpful. Then that's I could adjust idea. it. Yeah, that, that's the general idea. Is that you know that you each individual program will determine what they are certifying based on whatever local context. What is important in that local context, and the only thing that they will share globally is sort of the look and feel. And you know the idea of this Wikipedia driver's license. But the, the specifics of how it, it is applicable in your country will, bear, will be your choice to determine, not ours. Can we take one more quick question? I saw somebody on there. Derek. Um, yeah. um, just one more follow comment on that. Um, in terms of recognition, um, because there are many countries who, who recognize certificates very much, um, you will very quickly get into a problem of trademark, rec like trademark agreements with the foundation in terms of lending the media marks to the program for the recognition. So just think about that in advance. Yeah. Flora luckily works for the Native Foundation. So. <laughs> All right, I think we're out of time. I'm sorry. Do you, is your question really quick? Yes. Um, <laughs> well, it, well, you define educational programs as classroom activities. So I, I wonder, as a, as a former teacher, when to start? And uh, I know from my classes that my pupils couldn't, didn't have the same skills so uh, uh, could you perhaps uh, give me a comment on when to start using Wikipedia in education? And I also think that could you, for instance, uh, have the, uh, could we make versions of an article with 
that you have the article and then you have a small summary which is easier to understand because I think you should you should also have a, a certain level to, to be able to 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 use Wikipedia as a knowledge. Sure. Um, I, I would say, it, again, it varies depending on your local context, right? I can speak for the United States context and say there's no way we would work with high school students in the United States because the writing level of high school students just isn't good enough um, on a wide scale to contribute good content to the English Wikipedia. So we focus on undergraduate and higher because of that. Um, there's obviously very good students in high school, but they are individuals rather than entire uh, schools. And so we want to focus on something that's scalable and that the impact that we have can be across an entire class. And so it's much more appropriate for us to work with a particular, you know, with, with university level and higher. But that being said, certainly the educational context in other countries are very different. And I would not be surprised to see secondary school projects work perfectly well in countries that are not the United States. Um, in terms of, what was the second question? The versions of the same. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, the, there is actually the simple English Wikipedia. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but that is designed for, um, for sort of primary school students and um, non-native speakers of English and the, the idea behind the simple English Wikipedia is it's sort of an easier English uh, for, for people to, to read. So um, I, don't, I think English is the only one that has a simple version, but if you have to check it out yeah, before I encourage. French, uh, uh, Wiki, Wiki, Wiki Kids something, uh, but it exists, it exists in French as well. And, uh, and then I also give a totally opposite example because, uh, um, and that's the cool thing about the collaborative because you can find completely different uh, examples. Uh, in Israel, we've been actually working with the Ministry of Education, uh, creating some kind of modules depending on the, the, the age of the students, basically. So of course, naturally, um, primary schools will, will not be able, they're too small, simply. But we do want from an early age to get into the classroom and explain about Wikipedia. So giving them all kinds of ideas of what it is, how to use it correctly. Going to, um, to middle school, um, we created something else, working with, group, with teachers. So we are actually um, you know, um, helping teachers become sort of ambassadors in their own classroom. And we've actually targeted gifted children. And uh, we found that their level of um, articles are just uh, good enough to be just as a university uh, person. And they're, they're great. So high school students um, as well, of course, could write articles instead of, uh, I don't know, doing a project. So there are all sorts of ideas and ways. And I just wanted to to share that because that's, I mean, it, it gives you an idea that it doesn't really, there is no one way of doing it. Uh, and you have to find a way that, that works for you with the people that you work with. That's the most important. Indeed, I mean, taking your question to say something else in, in closing, this is precisely why this collaborative came together. It's to share uh, uh, our experiences across different regions and across different language Wikipedias because uh, it's not that one thing works for everyone. We would like to think that it does, but uh, from experience, we come to see that it doesn't. And the other thing is also to share resources. So some of the things uh, that, that I've been discovering, for example, are from the most unlikely places. And so this is what the collaborative really is about. It's not so much about finding answers to the questions, but recognizing that there are other people asking similar questions. And so that together, we can find answers that apply for us that don't necessarily apply for everyone else. All right, so we would love to continue talking to all of you, but we're out of time. So you can come find us in the community village. There's an education corner where the big banner that says Wikipedia belongs in education is. It's pretty easy to find. Um, and we'd love to talk to you all there. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Okay, well hopefully you're not all tired of listening to me talk because I have one more session today. <laughs> um, so, so this session is titled The Seven Biggest Mistakes That Wikipedia Pro Education Programs Made and What We've Learned From Them. Um, and I wanted to give this talk today from mostly my experience working uh, for the Wikimedia Foundation on the education program team for the last four years. Um, I left in March and moved on to the Wiki Education Foundation. Uh, but during my time with the Wikimedia Foundation, I was part of programs that got started in seven different countries. I was directly on the team working to start those programs. And so I have a sort of wide breadth of experience from all across the globe of what works and what doesn't work. And one of the things that I think is really important that our movement as a whole doesn't do enough is admit our failures. And there are things that work and there are things that just don't. Um, and I'm here today to talk about some of the things that don't work um, that you should definitely not do and that you should not repeat. <laughs> so I hope what you will take from this is both learning the things that don't work, but also learning the idea that it's okay to get up here in a large room and admit that you've made mistakes and you've had failures and you've learned from them. Because I think that's what's most important. Um, so the first mistake I want to talk about is not taking student abilities into account. I think this is a great lead-in from our previous question because this is really sort of key to starting an education program, right? It's like, what can my students do? So what I would say the lesson one is, is to investigate the student writing skill level prior to working with a new discipline or working with a new class or something like that. You know, if, you, if let's say you want to go and work with a medical school class. Here's some questions that are important to ask. Do the students write papers? Because if they don't write papers, then writing a Wikipedia article is going to be really, really difficult. If the students are very used to writing papers in a you know, humanities class and you've had the program with great success working in humanities class, that doesn't necessarily mean that it will just automatically translate to any discipline that you have in, in in your country's context. You know, if your students don't do a lot of writing, then think about other ways that they might be able to contribute content to the Wikimedia projects. Maybe they could take photos to upload to Commons to illustrate articles. Maybe they could take, uh, make illustrations and infographics and add those to Commons to illustrate an article. Maybe they could just do some copy editing. Things like that are different ways of taking student skill level into account and still making positive contributions to Wikimedia projects, but not necessarily in the writing an article, which is sort of the more traditional assignment. Now, if your students can write an article, they definitely should write an article because that obviously has a great impact on Wikipedia and students get a lot out of it. So the mistake number two was allowing instructors to engage only by email or by Google Docs or things like that. So one of the things that you will see if you start working with instructors all around the world is that some of them look at that wiki code and go, gosh, that looks really scary. I am not going to touch that. Um, and the problem with this is that the instructors themselves need to be able to know what's going on in their class. They need to be able to understand that they have a course page that they need to be updating. They need to be transparent about what they're doing to the community. It's what the community of editors, all of you, will expect of them. And it will give a better, uh, a better experience for the students if the instructor is engaging on Wiki with them. So essentially, the, the key here is to ensure that each instructor has a course page. And this is, there's a, a question in my first session here about what the education program extension is. Here's a screenshot of what the education program extension looks like. This is a course page. And so this is a particular one at Rice University. And so you see what term it is, the start date, the end date, how many students are enrolled in this class, uh, who the instructor is, the instructor's username, their top page, their contributions, any sandboxes, and then either any online or campus volunteers who are supporting the classes. And then you have this list of all the students, all of their usernames, links to their contribs, links to their top pages, and then they also list which articles they're working on. And so you can go in and see, hey, they, you know, these are the articles that the students are working on. And this level of transparency for the community is key. And the professor needs to be engaged and needs to be participating and needs to be creating the course pages and updating this information and making sure that what they're doing is visible to the community of editors. The mistake number three, working with a class of 300 plus students. 
This seems like a really good idea because you're like, oh my gosh, the scale's great. Like, I can get all these students and they can, they can edit and this professor knows what they're doing, this will be perfect. No, it's a really bad idea. Uh, keep class sizes under around 30 students. Uh, the challenge is when you start working with those larger classes, the students tend to have a, a, a less good connection with their instructors. And the instructor's excitement about the assignment and about the experience of editing Wikipedia is really crucial for the success of the program. And so you want to work with those small classes where the, if the students actually have a question, they feel like they can approach somebody and ask it. You know, they, they have an engagement with the course material and they need to kind of work with, with the faculty members. Now, can you have classes of 50 that still work? Absolutely. If this is not a sort of strong guideline, but sort of avoid the very large lecture hall style classes where students don't feel comfortable asking questions and don't feel comfortable engaging on the subject matter with the instructor. The fourth mistake, giving instructors too much deference in assignment design. Um, Jamie talked in the first session about how important assignment design is, and I think this I saw this mistake over and over and over again, and it took us several times to learn it. What happens is you think, gosh, this instructor has gone through all of these years of education and they know so much about teaching and they will know how to create this great Wikipedia assignment out of the box. The reality is they don't. Um, so what you need to do is you need to ensure that the assignment the instructor is giving works for Wikipedia. Because here's the deal. The professor is a subject matter in whatever the course topic is that, you, that they are teaching, but you are the expert on Wikipedia. You know what will work with Wikipedia, you know what will work with the community, you know how to make students have good contributions to Wikipedia. And when you are working with that instructor, it's your responsibility to tell the instructor, no, that's a bad assignment. And you know that can be difficult sometimes if you are a college student yourself or you don't feel like you have the ability to approach the instructor and say, no, I don't think that will work. But it, it's really important to sort of head off poor, poorly designed assignments ahead of time. Here's an example. If we had a professor come to us and say, I really want my students to, to get great analytical skills out of this assignment. And we were like, well, OK. Do you know that they shouldn't put any of that analysis on Wikipedia? And the professor's like, no, no, it'll be great. Like, they, they do really good analysis work. It'll, it'll be good. And, and you have to say, no, it's an encyclopedia. It's fact-based writing, right? You don't want to include that analysis. And so it's that engagement with the instructor and telling them no. And if they want to do that kind of assignment, then figure out an alternative for them that doesn't involve them posting analytical essays on Wikipedia. The fifth mistake is asking students to contribute uh, in a language they're not fluent in. Um, and we see this in a lot of the sort of the, the classes where they're studying a particular language and the faculty member says, hey, they do a bunch of translation work. You know, I will, ha I will have them, you know, learn their, they speak English natively, but they're translating into French or something like that. The problem is that students, when they're learning a language, just probably aren't quite good enough to write in that language to the standards of that language Wikipedia. But that doesn't mean that that's not a bad, that, that doesn't mean that translation assignments are bad. Because the key here is to have students translate from the language they're studying into their native language. So they're still learning the vocabulary, they're still you know, going word by word of the existing article in that language they're studying, but then they write better in their own native language. And so getting them to do that translation can be incredibly useful. And this can even happen from very, very small languages to large languages. Let me take this particular example. Um, this is the article on the Souk, which is a town in Egypt. I see we have a few of our Egyptians back there. This is the article on the English Wikipedia on this town in Egypt. And it is incredibly small, if you notice. And then this little tiny thing that you can't really see over there, because I had to make it really small to fit it on there, is the article on this town in the Arabic Wikipedia. So even though the Arabic Wikipedia is incredibly small in comparison to the English Wikipedia, there's still all kinds of information about local contexts that a student studying, uh, a student in the United States studying Arabic could take this article on this town, 
in, uh, from the Arabic Wikipedia and translate it from Arabic into English and make those contributions to the English Wikipedia. So there, there are those pockets and those abilities for students to translate even from the small language Wikipedias into the large language Wikipedias. Okay, this is, this is the big one. <laughs> students plagiarize a lot. <laughs> Um, there, there's no getting around this. I mentioned this earlier. There's a, a question about it. Um, students all over the world will always attempt to plagiarize, and if they think they can get away with it, they will do it. Um, so uh, the, the lesson coming out of here is to stress the importance of original content on Wikipedia. So, so the sort of the, the, the pushing of that, and then come behind them and check their work. Um, it is really important to make sure that all the student content that goes on Wikipedia is original content. Um, students will be very tempted to copy and paste. Many of them will have been copying and pasting for years and will have gotten away with it and will have sort of forgotten how to do original content writing. Um, and so making sure that you're stressing the importance of why it matters to Wikipedia <coughs> to not have plagiarized content on and how it's actually a really big deal is incredibly important. Uh, and then the, the last mistake here is not planning for problems. And here's the thing, right? No matter how perfect of a plan you have for any program that you're going to do, something's going to go wrong. And so you want to always have a plan in place to deal with any exigencies that come up as you are engaging with your program. So, you know, what if something, you know, goes wrong in this aspect? What if this professor does this? What if this ambassador ends up needing to leave the university for the term? Who are we going to get to fill in? Things like that. Having plans in place before you get started to figure out, hey, you know, if, the, if something goes wrong here, here's what I'm going to do, is really important. So you're not left with all of a sudden there's a big drama and people are yelling at you on wiki and things are blowing up and you don't have any concept of what to do about them. If you've taken the time in advance to put a plan in place of some possible problems that might come up, then you can figure out how you want to adjust and deal with them. Uh, so I want to recap here the mistakes, uh, not taking student abilities into account, allowing instructors to engage only by email or Google Docs, working with a class of 300 plus students, giving instructors too much deference in assignment design, asking students to contribute in languages they're not fluent in, students plagiarize a lot, and not planning for problems. And then the lessons learned that I highly encourage all of you to adopt instead of making the same mistakes that I made. Um, those are investigate student writing skill level, ensure each instructor has a course page, keeping class size under 30 students, ensuring the assignment works for Wikipedia, having students translate from the language they're studying to the language they're fluent in, stressing the importance of original content on Wikipedia and checking their work, and then having a plan to deal with exigencies. Okay, any questions? Yes? I have a comment. Uh -huh. uh, uh, from experience from our country, it's Wikimedia chapter from, from Estonia. Mm -hmm. And we have been running education programs since 2010. Mm -hmm. And actually, the most successful part of it is with a course mo with more than 300 students. Okay. So, so this is the most successful one. This is uh, this expression, literary expression of general uh, science students, mm -hmm. and this is really the cause. This is like the whole faculty is there. But uh, you have to ensure that, that everyone has assistance, that they can get feedback. So this is not uh, not the teacher being there for every one of them. You have these volunteers. You have this stuff for, for this course. You just have to ensure that you have. Uh, Someone holds hand of everybody. Exactly, so, exactly. So you can have very successful 300 plus courses, but you have to pro provide support for every each and one student in that, in that program. Yes, no, I would agree with that. We, we did have a 100 student class that we worked with, and we broke the students into groups of about 10 and assigned each group of 10, I think, one or two volunteers that they worked with the entire time. and. You know, that, that was a lot of volunteer effort going into one class, but it was very successful. So, so it can be done, but you definitely have to spend the time to break up the, the class into smaller groups and make sure that all the students have the support. Peter? Yeah, another comment. Uh, well, I've had a class of 950, and this year I'm going to have a class of 3,620. <laughs> uh, 
So what you want to do if you if you put in still a Wikipedia assignment uh, is that you might have to plan several years ahead of time because first you need to grow your ambassadors. You can't do that by yourself. So I can tell you about 400, then, then it's over. That's, you can't do that with one person. So which means, you know, academics and teachers, they, they, they think in semesters, in terms, in years. And if you want to include such a thing, say in 2016, you might have to start tomorrow uh, to first have the workshop with class size 30 for the future volunteers. Uh, for the future campus ambassadors, and only once you're sure they can do it, only then you can roll out the course. That, that is possible, but you have to unfortunately, you know, you, you will be in a situation where you have to require the volunteers, campus ambassadors, you have to require them to pass and not just to attend. Because, you know, sometimes it's difficult, another teacher learning something from you, uh, they might say, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I understood. And then you realize that the students are actually not the problem. It's the ambassadors that are the problem. They didn't understand it themselves and they give wrong advice. I get that. Uh, and that is very embarrassing. And then you're standing in front of a huge dump uh, <laughs> site and, and then all, all the admins are coming and, and, and struggling. You have ambassadors because not every country has them. So I think it falls under what we've talked about before of planning whatever works for your country. I mean, you were able to do it because you plan ahead and you have enough volunteers. So that works. So everybody can find their own solution as long as you're preparing for the work that needs to be done. Yeah, and, and I would stress that about sort of all of these lessons, right, is that, you know, I, I have tried to make these general as possible, but certainly there are exceptions to every single one of them. Well, maybe not every single one of them, but there, there's exceptions to certainly some of them up here. And the idea is not that these are a prescriptive way of doing it, it's that these are things you should definitely clearly consider before you start doing work in your country. And maybe this isn't, maybe the students in your country miraculously don't plagiarize like every other country, but, but probably they do. And, but, but maybe that's the case, right? And in that case then, you know, you don't need to, to necessarily do anything about that, but it's worth saying, you know, hey, is this going to be a problem for me? And if it is, then I need to address it. If it's not, then I don't need to address it. I'd like to comment on the number six. If mm -hmm. I were to give illustration uh, assigned to student, will student plagiarize mm -hmm. photos and other things? I, yes. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the question is, um, is you know, do, do, do students plagiarize in all different kinds of assignments? And the answer is yes. <laughs> I don't know how many of you have worked in classroom assignments um, or, or work taught students, but plagiarism is really a big deal. Um, I think, you know, what, what I hear from professors in the U.S. that I work with now is that, you know, usually they get something around 30 to 40 percent of the student work that they get in as a direct plagiarism. And what they generally find is that about half of that is directly plagiarized from Wikipedia. And so simply by assigning students to contribute content to Wikipedia, they then can't plagiarize Wikipedia because they are writing an article that didn't exist. And so thus that, that takes care of half of it right off the bat. And then the other bunch, you know, they, they Exactly, exactly. But the other bunch will either be, you know, willing to not plagiarize anymore because they actually find it's a useful assignment. They're putting work into a resource that they themselves use every day. And, you know, by explaining why it's important to not plagiarize on Wikipedia, you can generally get the students to avoid plagiarizing if they understand how. Can I just so, add that uh, yeah. one of the things that work in terms of plagiarizing, at least <coughs> from my experience, is period evaluation. Yeah. Having an assignment for the students specifically to check one another and to see they're not plagiarizing and having it part of their grade, um, yeah. which is a good way of teaching them what we want to do. Yeah, so, so for those of you in the back who might not have heard that, Shani was saying that um, what she has found in Israel is adding peer-reviewed components to the, the, the marks that students get for the assignment is a really good way of addressing plagiarism. Um, the, the course page extension here actually has a reviewer's column, which I didn't get into, 
Um, but that is specifically designed to have that peer review functionality. So each of the, one of the, the, the other classmates will go in and click add myself as a reviewer and then we'll sign up to peer review um, one of their classmates articles. So that, that's a really great way of sort of encouraging that peer review system and then that's another level of sort of quality check that can be done on the peer to peer level as well. Yeah. So, so we ask students to either delete the content that they added. Um, we work with faculty members. You know, if, there, if there's a problem, we will bring it to that particular student's uh, professor and ask them to uh, either remove the content themselves or work with the students to revise the content to make it not plagiarized. Another thing to, to remember is a lot of universities have honor codes, and plagiarism actually breaks that and so most of our professors are able to say that to their students and remind them that they're going to follow through with whatever the we'll say punishment or consequences are at their university so i definitely encourage that. yeah the the universities at least in the u.s and canada where we operate have very strict anti-plagiarism policies and students can get even kicked out of the school for plagiarism for getting caught at plagiarism and that uh, the, the professors often will find that reminding students of that and saying, look, you're actually writing something on this resource where people will find it. And the, the actual, you, you will get caught if you do it on Wikipedia. You know, you might not get caught in your regular paper, but you will get caught if you do it on Wikipedia is a really good way of having students not plagiarize to begin with because they're scared they will actually get caught for once. Um, I have one more minute. I just got the thing, so last question. Yeah, yeah, the question is, should, should Wikipedia activities be mandatory or optional? I think that depends on your cultural context. Um, I think it works perfectly fine in the U.S. to make the assignments mandatory, although with all of the assignments, you know, the, the professors say, look, if you can't complete this or you don't want to work with, with Wikipedia, we can do an alternative assignment. So it's not, you know, it's mandatory in that it's assigned to all students, but if they have a serious objection, they can back out of it. Um, that may or may not be true in all cultural contexts. Not every uh, student in every country is capable of writing a Wikipedia assignment. And so if that's not the case for your country, and that's where I think the, the local leaders are the best ones to make that call and why investigating your student writing skill level before you begin, which was um, lesson one, nope, that's lesson two, lesson one there, is, is really important and then make that call based on what you um, what you determine from that. So it, it, can, it can function very well as a voluntary assignment as well. So. Okay, well I think we are out of time, but I want to say thank you all for listening to me. Those of you who have been here listening to me for an hour and a half especially, thank you. Um, excuse me, sorry, just a small announcement. Uh, from 7 o'clock onwards, currently we have a 30 minutes break, and from 7 o'clock onwards we have the evening program. Uh, there's, a, there's a geek comedy show, there are some private concerts, and there's even creative brainstorming. You can see it all in uh, wikimaniaLondon.org slash evening, or in the Wikimania brochure. <laughs>